It's finally here. 20.7.1, July's anticipated update for as far as fixing some of the things that have been certified through Windows, but Windows is slacking. My name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7th channel. Today we're going to be covering a variety of different tech related information. As you can see over here to my side, there's a lot of stuff you can get into the graphic setting which you can conveniently get into the little toolbar after 2004 is installed and the applicable drivers are installed as well. Now this is aimed for fixing a lot of the issues that have been kind of created but it seems like Windows definitely has got some growing pains to get past in order to actually make these things work. But AMD has left some pretty cool stuff that I would suggest honestly installing this. But make sure again you do a clean install, ditch all the other data. It seems like as they progress with the format, Windows fights with um, AMD like honestly in the installs. So I would suggest when doing these newer installs, make sure to clean install them. So let's go ahead and jump over to the patch notes and see what we got cooking because there's a lot of fixes. This one. Oh my gosh, dear blob so with us taking a little bit more of a closer look at what's going down for the added support for as far as the disintegration as well as the amd bug report we can dive a little bit closer and we start seeing some of the fixes now with the 50 like portions of the rx series finally hitting the list inside of the 5000 and what they have it's always going to be there for as far as the stutters and in, in plays it kind of seems like it's something that they'd be kind of fixing but kind of seems like maybe it's I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to see that off the list in the near future. Now, with the Radeon 7, they're boasting that they fixed it more than likely the metric overlay for as far as opening it inside of there for the drops. And that was one of the issues that I noticed even with the, I guess, um, dual setup I was running before. And now I'm running my, you know, mean green machine with an NVIDIA card and the Radeon 7 in an coupling point because I wanted to test out the accelerator just to make sure that it wasn't just on AMD. This one was an epic fail almost across the board with Windows, which we'll get into benchmarks later on. Now, as far as, far as the display inside of there and the instead of portions of the streaming portions and preview and the screens, you can see the Radeon software is still having an issue for streaming and I would suggest OBS, honestly, inside of that situation for as far as there. Now, fans and custom tuning, which was kind of nice for as far as with the Radeon um, portions. And that's what I've always kind of had like and liked um, personally, like upgrading my own stuff inside of the resets so if they make it a little bit more customizable and a little bit more easy and usable then that'd be kind of good but i'm not expecting a lot of big wow factor when i will mess with it the next time or host an overclocking episode now looking at the custom tunes and profiles and loads out in the boot screens they are trying to make that easier as far as the display and the resolutions and the full panels and the counter strike there's a lot of stuff for as far as what the gpu information and the population down to the oops sorry something's wrong and appeared inside of the clicking portion on top of the valorant and the listings and league of legends down to the microsoft and the team and experience and the tdr to the saint rose and the third portions and the system crashes and the hangups and the dota 2 for as far as where the radeon chill and in the enabling portions of where the idle time period would be invoking the radeon overlay sometimes will shudder inside of the custom come playback for as far as like netflix which they've always been kind of on top of not really um Dosex makes the list for as far as hangups and crashes on top of the situation for as far as zero when it comes down to the portions of the fan speed with the GPU Z running alongside the 3D applications. Now, on top of the toasty messages and features in the instant replays for as far as GIFs and the replays and the not correct portions on the recording desktop, on top of the portions where the installing provided was not being able to be attempted for as far as the application install. Now, as we can kind of scroll down, we can kind of see that there's a lot of things to do with the Ryzen 3 20 to 100 for as far as what we get down to the mobile processors and the Radeons. Now, with the Vega 3 inside of that situation, that's probably more than likely an upgradable portion to where they're going to be releasing some cooler stuff. Doom makes the list twice for the HDR overlays in the 5600 series and the processing ports. The hardware inside of the accelerator in Chrome on top of the V9 playback, which has a lot to do with your 4K and upscaling portions for the display ports. If you don't really have that enabled, you're probably going to be running 1080p because it's a different format play. Uh, fun fact. On top of the situation for as far as the grass or water inside of the corruptions inside of Final Fantasy 15 in the extended period play, and the Radeon software fell into Generations and League of Legends on top of the in-game play for as the cutoff and the invoking 4K display on the desktops for as far as running when they were doing the resolutions four times less on top of the 1080p. Now, Direct LM for as far as the uh, portions of what we're going to be getting down to when it's 
ML, not LM, and the media portions of what goes down to the non-reboot portions of the report still in use. So sometimes it just doesn't want to let go. Um, on top of the situation and the enabling and the image sharpening, the colors may appear washed out on HDR enabled, which I don't really find too much um, nowadays. I find like that's kind of like something on your TV too. Uh, but it's cool that, you know, at least AMD's still working on it. Now, known issues, we're going to kind of just skim over because, I mean, these things are always kind of on these lists. It's not anything super big. And I'll leave these down below so we can kind of get to some benchmarks for as far as what's going to be the open issues for the on warp portions of VR and other things that will be kind of going down to there that are open things that I kind of feel are a little repetitive, um, but things that you can kind of see if they're on your list. So first and foremost, before we kind of get down to, because I have a slew of information that's going to be coming at you guys and gals for as far as should I turn on the hardware accelerator? Should I turn on the FPS high point? No, don't do either. Um, quite frankly, what you're going to want to do is install 20.7.1 and you will get a pretty good imp uh, boost improvement, but it's going to be variable as I have noticed that it will be for my setting. It's anywhere from a 21 to 400 boost on like a little bit point uh, per points, which isn't too bad. It gives you a nice little media. Now, if you have these unlocked, you will lose almost close to about like it's like a thousand like points to almost like 1300 points literally by just engaging these on so i don't suggest them it seems like it, it's suppressing a lot of the raw power rather than uh kind of doing what it's supposed to um so i would definitely suggest installing this but definitely don't have any of them engaged so let's go ahead and look at the results and pull up fire strike as an example of what's going on with that with its utilization of the direct x11 so let us begin at the very last update, what we basically had right over here. But peering into this, this is the basic update, nothing overclocked. We're looking at nothing for as far as advanced scheduling or anything, and that's a pretty respectable score. Now, when we go to the very next portion, this is with, again, same update. What we've done is we've clicked on the refresh We've clicked on the portion of what's going on. I don't get it. Um, acceleration and all this other crap. And it literally tanked it. Now, I went back and retested it. And I noticed with everything off, it was perfectly fine. And then I did some variable testing in between there as we come into the very new update. Um, that's everything off. So basically what I figured out is this is with everything off, old update. This is brand new update with everything off. So there's a very good consistency considering that this is everything on and then this is the variable point of me messing around with it and figuring out, oh hey, there really is something to be like said that the graphic accelerator is not working for the scheduling in Windows for 2004. So I don't know what Windows is doing, but it seems like AMD is at least trying. Now pushing on past that, as we can see the variable point, I broke it down even better. So as we can kind of push forward for as far as right here, we can kind of see what ends up happening as we kind of go through a little bit of many cycles. And I kind of noticed that, hey, I wanted to see what the consistency between those. So yeah, there's about like a 200 drop between a test to test without it really doing much. Now, when we go into here, this is with the accelerator directly on and the refresh rate directly on, if you have both of those options. This is the one directly for as far as the portion of both of those on. I, I'm sorry, both of these are on. Both of those are directly for as far as just the scheduler of the refresh rate, not the accelerator portion of the performance boost because there's two different portions where it'll try to push it. Um, so there is a definitely a combination where it draws both of them. And at the same time, I retested that again when we're looking at this score right over here for as far as what I got on top of the clear portions of just having a retest because I wanted to make sure that when I was going through all these tests and looking at all these results that it made portions of sense. So your median literally is right about the roughly about 21 and some quarters as I come out of my PlayStation screen on top of the DirectX 11. So it's not too bad. Like honestly for seeing that variable, I'd much rather see that variable without a suppressed portion of what's going down now with that being said and us understanding kind of what windows 2004 is really kind of bringing to the table and what amd and nvidia are bringing to the table for as far as their updates and what they're installing on drivers and trying to build upon this system um, because i'm pretty sure linux probably just runs really smooth pretty 
good. I want to get to Linux eventually. But the point being is let's go ahead and see what our Ultra is back to back with the 20.5 series going to the 20.7 series and seeing if there's any improvements. And again, I'll be testing it with the scheduling off against all these situations just for the simple reason I don't want any interference and I seem to be the scheduling off and the FPS improvements that they give you with the options don't really come into play for you. Work that so with point for point for looking at the situation, we edge forward with the extreme test with the more experimental, awesome driver without big scheduling on or anything else. And it's doing really wonderful. So I think it's really good because it consistently is pretty good for FPS. So no surprise to see Ultra also accelerating along the road. Now when we dive into DirectX 12, let's see what goes down. Now, some beautiful things. I mean, honestly, it seems like with a lot of the situations at hand, DirectX 12 has been getting a lot of overhauling by a lot of the companies. So I did see a lot of leaps and bounds, and maybe in certain games, this might be where the application of the scheduling is more aimed at, because it seems like with NVIDIA's aim of DirectX 11, 12 Ultimate, 13 Ultimate, whatever they want to get into and in designing nowadays, and all the companies being ready for this hardware shift, it really seems like right now we're just waiting on Windows to kind of just knock it out of the park with the software that we've been getting with the hardware we already have. So um, as we go into the 4K testing of DirectX 12, let's see what we get. Solid increasements. So I'm not seeing any issues here, honestly. As long as you follow the format of doing a clean install for these situations, so make sure you download it directly from AMD's site, install it, make sure you click additional options down below it, hit factory, make sure you reset your settings and then re-input your settings and everything should be pretty much fine. But as far as more than likely situations going south, because I did notice after I installed it, at the very end, I kind of let it go idle before I recorded this video, and it did something that I know that Windows kind of failed when it was installed 2004 for the first time with AMD, and it makes me want to continue to do a clean install every single time I do AMD um, installs with 2004, was it kind of did this really ghost effect where my system almost like I couldn't really press anything, all the buttons kind of faded away, and I literally had to like hold down the power button and do a hard reset of the system for it to recognize it. Now, once I did the clean install, all that disappeared, everything was fine. Um, but I did notice that it's having like issues probably with like power delegation between the system when things go idle. Cause I also had to switch it to the AMD recommended power settings, which it crashed for a thread error and then booted up and it was perfectly fine for like almost like until now, honestly, it was a, about a month solid, like give or take between like, we were, playing with this like software now uh, but everyone you have a very nice day thank you so much for staying tuned if you stayed tuned this long I should definitely suggest um you know subscribing it's absolutely free it helps me out as a creator and if you do today who knows maybe just maybe the time spy person directly right there might become a superhero that'd be kind of cool right the adventures of time spy and it's gpu companion i don't know that'd probably be a horrible cartoon Anyways, um, thank you so much. Stay classy, stay safe, and I appreciate everyone utilizing those affiliate links down below. Even if you don't buy that like specific item, if you use that portal, it's a way to support me as a creator. And I never ask for anything from my community. I'm much rather you guys and guys buy what you want, so we can work in harmony with Amazon. So cool. If you shop through Amazon, you should totally use those links. And I'll see you guys and guys in the near future. Check some of the videos that are up above. It's tech-related stuff that YouTube and I both think you can really check out. So, I'll see you guys and gals in the near future. I'll be doing some more updates alongside of what Windows is doing because it kind of definitely seems like it's really just Windows now that's uh, kind of holding everyone back inside of the acceleration, which is going to be very interesting once Intel you know, enters the game because Intel is actually pretty good with driver support with Windows, so they actually might hit it out of the park with them. But I don't know. Let's stay tuned to find out.